Uh, and uh, the presenter is uh, Ivan Stein in War Energy, who will give us a talk about the King uh, Prince discovery that was made uh, last year. Uh, after graduating in Italy, Ivan started working for Fugler Robertson and uh, later Fugler Jason as a petrophysicist. After that, Ivan joined the ENI, where he has uh, worked as exploration geologist in several countries, including Norway, uh, <clears throat> Milan at the headquarters, uh, and Nigeria before going to Myanmar as uh, the exploration manager. Uh, Ivan has since 2017 been back in Norway, where since uh, 2019 he has been the exploration manager for Southern uh, North Sea in uh, World Energy. So thank you very much, um, Ivan, for uh, being here. I can uh, see you, so that's uh, that works fine. Please can share your. Yeah, thank you for a nice introduction and good morning, everyone. I'll try to share my presentation. Okay. Yes, there is it. I hope you can see now. Yes. Okay. All right. I will drive through the King Prince discovery uh, we made last year. And uh, as said earlier, uh, this was very much a teamwork uh, shared with all the guys that you see listed here and uh, with a great support from our partner, uh, Mime Petroleum. Uh, the presentation uh, will go through a very short introduction, then uh, I'll talk about a bit the pre-drill models, especially for some of the uh, objective of, the, of the, this uh, discovery and was not really straightforward. Briefly touch upon uh, some lesser known on the drilling side of operation and then result and uh, what we learn out of it. But uh, First of all, I set in the scene where we are. Uh, we are basically in the central part of North Sea, very close to the Baldering on the field. And as you can see, the King Prince uh, discovery, it's here in 027, just north of PL001. So the oldest lights in the NCS, but still uh, a, lot to, a lot to explore. Of course, here we are chasing High Valley Barrow, uh, very close to our infrastructure. We are about five kilometers from Ringorne. And uh, as you know, VOR is uh, undertaking a major uh, effort here to revamp the Balda field. We are currently drilling uh, some wells, some infill wells, and the plan is to basically drill about 18 wells with a potential additional resource of about 160 uh, MBOE. <clears throat> Where we are geologically, uh, as I said, the central part of the North Sea, we are basically on the western flank of the northern part of the Sierra High. Uh, facing uh, the Vanus Basin uh, in the southern part of the of the Viking Graben. And if you look at this uh, cross section uh, in the in middle of the slide, you really see basically the setting, the cross section run essentially from uh, from uh, UK, from Shetland platform to the Zero High. And you see it's a pretty nice antique uh, upper Jurassic and Cretaceous basin draped by uh, this uh, fantastic sheet sandstone, the Palisine, uh, triggered by uh, drop of sea level uh, and uh, shading sediment into the Banna Basin from uh, the East Shetland platform, which are uh, gradually getting thin and overlapping uh, uh, into the into the Hutsir High. If you look at the strut chart, I mean, you see here, I marked basically where we found hydrocarbon in this area. And basically we found hydrocarbon all the way from using uh, down to basement. So it's uh, really the right place to, to be or exploring for, uh, for, for, for hydrocarbons. Although we are essentially producing here from using, polysine and uh, from, uh, from, uh, from Jurassic. So, close out a bit on uh, the location of, uh, of King Prince, uh, zoom in a bit on this uh, regional section that goes uh, west-east from uh, the western side of, uh, of the Utsira, of the northern part of Utsira, till, uh, let's say, this, the, the mid of the high, the Ringornefold block. Just to give you a bit of an idea of the geometry, it's a, definitely a prominent basement high, mainly dominated by extensional faulting. 
And uh, let's say in the soup chocolates, uh, we were basically targeting with prints, uh, essentially this uh, mixed stratigraphic structural tra stratigraphic in the sense that you see this very nice truncation on the western flank uh, of, of the basically of the, the stat fjord essentially, and a bit maybe also uh, Triassic as well. While uh, post shock, you see nicely thinning of the whole Paleocene, which is getting thinner and overlapping into the eye. So that's basically the setting we were chasing. Uh, with, uh, we planned for a quite complex well, a dual leg wells, where with prints, we're basically chasing uh, essentially uh, uh, the lower part of the Stadtfjord, Ericsson formation, or uh, in the old Exxon nomenclature as far as five. Essentially, a series of a fault block, as I said, truncated to the to the western side, and the idea was to chase this uh, nice braided uh, system, which is producing a fantastic well uh, east of Prince in the Rangona fault block, with potential additional target in the Triassic and uh, in the Skagerrak, which has been discovered north and uh, west of us in 820 and 917. Very slim chance of finding hydrocarbon in the Hermod uh, in the Paleocene because we thought that this was connected with, this, with the injectite system. So we we're expecting to find the Hermod below the contact, and this was very much the case. While the short leg, the king, was essentially test uh, aimed to test this very nice uh, uh, flat uh, anomaly, injectites into the Balder formation, which was our so-called sweet spot for the for the king branch. Just uh, briefly touch on injectites. It's a, I call the conventional unconventional play, and it's a, you will see the challenging of working with injectite. And it's a nice sketch uh, uh, provided by the Virginie Patax that works in the uh, Balder uh, subsurface operation, which give you a bit of idea how this play works. That uh, the original send position in this case is Heimdall, in our case will be Ermut, which is a quite thick and massive sandstone, structural less, which are gradually thinning and uh, unlapping and pinching out on west of the pinch uh, on the Otsura High. And a very nice analog in uh, Hanoi and Provence with this uh, very thick sandstone about 50 meters. Uh, here in this cliff, which are, you can follow the termination and the pinch out a quite stiff angle, very similar to what we see in Balder. That's the, the, the original setting. Then triggered by pressure, uh, increased pressure basing words, and most likely also from underneath chenozoic overpressure, this sensor had been basically start moving, had been remobilized, given this uh, mounted geometry that you can typically see at, at the Balder. And further moving into the overline stratigraphy, uh, given this uh, nice geometries of uh, 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 sill and uh, and dike coming from uh, essentially volcanic uh, geology, and you see how it looked like also an night crop. This is taken from uh, from Panoche Hill, where you have uh, basically the mother sandstone remobilize it, giving this mounted feature and then intruding into the overline, overline stratigraphy. And on the other hand, a scale, a uh, different scale, definitely on core, that's about their B14 wells, which was covering essentially this wing. Very distinct cutting of the encasing uh, madstone with a very sharp boundary. No structure almost on the sandstone, but fantastic properties. About 34, 35% porosity unit and about three, five uh, Darcy of uh, permeability. So that's the setting for King, but that's also telling you the challenge that we have while dealing with this kind of object. I overlaid basically a sun wavelet on the Panoche Hill outcrop, and that tells you really what you can see on seismic. With our data, we are different broadband uh, multi azimuth data set. Essentially, we see top and base of those bodies when they are more or less on a thickness of between 15 and 20 meters, where I come up as a single loop, more or less, with a thickness of about uh, uh, 8, 8, uh, 10 meters. And this is how they look like 
on our seismic before we start drilling. Here uh, on top, you have a near uh, stack and on the bottom, the far stack. And this is a zigzag line that goes from our top pole location towards B, uh, the Prince location, then goes on C where there is the King side track and a top pole and then towards King. So uh, we didn't expect to find any injured type in Prince. It was very much okay in our expectation uh, versus what we found. Then you, our main target was this uh, anomaly, which is blooming uh, in, the, in the far stack. Uh, it's a clear soft sandstone, our main uh, sweet spot. And the idea is, okay, if King is positive, let's try and test something outside this uh, kind of uh, sweet spot with, where we start seeing this kind of shooting up geometry from Hermut, which are not really clear on the seismic. Uh, even if you move to the far, it's not really coming up nicely. But what you can see here in green and red, and I will talk about a bit more later on, is the 4D response, which in this case played quite a bit, a big role helping us in place in the well. Just, uh, I need to also explain a bit how we work this play, because it's not really, <laughs> not really straight. Uh, the first pass is, of course, we try to do a visual interpretation of all uh, of the injection. Uh, and typically in a pre-drill model, we had of course Balder as reference where these sandstone are essentially soft sandstone. So we were looking for soft anomalies, class three, class two ADO essentially. And the idea was you flip a bit among all the different cubes, but typically what you use is essentially mainly for detecting this kind of body. Uh, it's uh, the far, uh, normal, as you see here on the right part of the slide, bottom right, or even face rotated, what we call code data. Then we carry out uh, essentially our interpretation. Uh, doing, after doing this, we normally, uh, what we do, it's we are quite a lot of data in the Balder area. So what we did is basically tied the, our soft response with about more or less 60 wells we used and basically made our geobody inverting soft response versus net sandstone and creating this kind of binary cube. But it's not uh, yet over because this area is quite well known for having the so-called false positive, some soft anomalies which are not really related to sandstone. The easiest one to detect are the one close to the base boulder related to tough presence. Uh, and we just mapped and removed from this cube. We removed also some kind of soft anomalies related in this area to uh, some hard, hard uh, 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 injection, which had been penetrated by nearby wells, which doesn't mean that you don't have sense from there, but it's just, uh, we are blind because the soft is just a side lobe of these hard events. And then the most difficult one, uh, it's a tricky one, uh, Close to the top boulder, you have uh, essentially an impedance contrast between two shales in this area, or the shales and the boulder shales, giving you quite a lot of this false positive. And this was the next step. After that, we basically have a, a kind of cube of a net sandstone ready to use for our basically prediction. But again, as I said, we were looking for really soft anomalies when we drill uh, the injured tide at King. And as I mentioned earlier, a big help was coming from 4D. Uh, here we are dealing with a quite uh, regional aquifer, which is very responsive to, uh, to production effect. And we had the luxury here of having uh, two cube, uh, two monitor cube acquired in 12 and 18, uh, which were really very useful in uh, placing the well and also try to identify uh, where sandstone were. Essentially, you are dealing with uh, three types of for the response softening due to gas uh, cap expansion or and and or regional depletion and gas exolution uh, and uh, softening due to oil replacing water or that is basically pushing down by gas cap expansion combined with aquifer depletion or hardening essentially water conning due to production <clears throat> 
And we, we're, of course, we're looking for this uh, soft response. And as you see at the sidetrack location, we had a very prominent for the response, both of this doublet of gas replacing oil and oil replacing water. <clears throat> so that uh, was essentially what we had in Prodrail. So did, we had a quite aggressive uh, uh, plan for, for this well. Uh, we drilled. Uh, uh, a long uh, leg targeting, as I said, mainly Statfjord in Prince, uh, with the idea of side tracking in case of oil down to and uh, uh, in the Statfjord a bit uh, uh, down deep to test the contents. And then we had uh, with an inclination of about 40 degree. And then we have also quite inclined design for uh, the King branch that was supposed to target this uh, soft anomaly and going uh, down to BCU. In case of success in, in King, we had a further sidetrack planned to test the injured tides outside the main sweet spot. In this area, um, it's drilling it, uh, operation are quite challenging. We have uh, some very plastic shale in the policy, in, which are creating quite a bit of trouble uh, with the uh, well bore stability as well uh, in the statue and Skagarak. So, Going with uh, such severe inclination was a bit of a hard sort. For compensating for that, we plan for a very robust LWD program uh, to mitigate in case of failure of a uh, world line acquisition. And this was really a kind of a really uh, a good idea. And uh, we came, we also plan for coring on the fly, which is not straightforward in the injured tides, but at the end we managed to achieve what we wanted and the well was completed on time and uh, within estimated budget. So if we go to result here, um, that's uh, how Prince came in. We found a pretty massive vermouth, a fantastic reservoir, great properties, but water wet. And now our main target, the lower statue as well, came definitely uh, dry, very good sandstone, comparable to what we have found in the Ringone, 65% um, of net gross, good porosity, but no hydrocarbon. While uh, going deeper, we find uh, hydrocarbon in the upper part, uh, in the upper part of the Skagrak. A bit of zoom in on Skagrak and um, uh, as I said, we found hydrocarbon uh, with a down two situation. We didn't find any content. And when we decided to core, unfortunately, we were already in the and <laughs> and water. But although the core was still very important to get a bit of understanding of this uh, fluvial system uh, uh, in uh, in the Skagrak. And as I said, we had trouble um, while acquiring uh, wildline. We were basically uh, had a very short time to 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 acquire data because the four uh, the, the the borough was uh, collapsing so we had uh, uh, managed to get one sample uh in uh, in the old zone but uh, we aborted a couple of other uh, attempts we had but uh, on the other hand we had a pretty comprehensive acquisition uh, uh while drilling so we had a lot of pressure data acquired with uh, stethoscope when we moved to King, uh, King uh, came in exactly as uh, we promised. We expected by our net uh, sandstone cube about nine meter of sandstone, and we found essentially eight meter uh, other carbon bearing. With on top some very thin injection in, in the gas zone, uh, we found uh, uh, the gas, um, the gas uh, oil contact, uh, and a down to situation. Uh, while uh, since we had the discovery in Skagrak, we decided to deepen the well and test Skagrak. And here as well, uh, we found more or less the same kind of characteristic in Skagrak with uh, potential thin hydrocarbon really on the top of, of the Skagrak. And then we drilled the king side track. And the result was really above our ex expectation. We found about 40 meters of uh, uh, an oil zone, which is this. Uh, strange response on top about uh, 13 50 meters what we call the breccia zone and then about 20 meters of very nice and clean sandstone oil bearing with our water content um, when we compared it to well we correlated well uh, we managed to sample to sample uh, 
quite a lot in uh, in King main bore, main bore hall where the side track was uh, acquired in six inch hall so no much data acquired there but uh, we had all the data acquired in King gas oil and water sample and essentially uh, there is a clear communication between the two well uh, when you look at the pressure data you see that the points are perfectly aligned although some are acquired well line some while drilling so we established basically gas oil contact and the oil water contact with no no issue uh bit different situation in uh, in prints um we had um few uh, pressure point in the oil zone, few pressure point in the water zone in prints, a bit more tricky, uh, the reservoir property sinking deepening, although some of them seems more or less talking with prints. Uh, and basically in the pressure data, we establish a kind of free water zone. How would it look like on seismic um, post well? Uh, here, I have to say that we had quite a bit of trouble uh, as well on the velocity model, because uh, the geology is changing quite a bit. The palisine on top is changing in thickness. The chalk itself is changing phases. We basically have mar in prints, while in king we found the proper chalk. So that's is impacting quite a lot, the velocity model. But all in all, uh, we were more or less uh, okay with our promises. We found uh, this big segment here marked in red, and there is definitely a big upside potential towards the updip, updip uh, unexplored sector of, uh, of, the, of the structure, and maybe even uh, towards Ringo and the fog block. This is how it looked like on seismic instead, uh, uh, the king uh, injection complex. No injectites the as usual the top is near the bottom is a is a far uh, and this uh, quad data rotate 90 degree rotated face rotated no injectites uh, in prints as expected although you see really close top of boulder this prominent soft anomalies but again this was one of these false positive and you start seeing it more clear on the far the wings going from the mother sandstone towards uh, uh, to into into the boulder formation while it's coming quite nicely and quite clear the main event but there was there, there was a but because uh here where we found the clean sandstone as you see you don't get any very and you don't get any soft anomaly which is basically represented by the warm the warm color and that was a big surprise that this this sandstone underneath the so-called breccia are responding very differently for what we have seen in Balder. It's most likely a hard, a hard event, which is a different uh, your response on what we expect. So this is a quite big impact potentially on gross bulk volume, because uh, this is a sketch that uh, we got from uh, from Zurich, from the Tumaya Hill wing, where essentially, as you can see, it is a network of uh, dikes and sill is kind of uh, uh, embedded in a cloud of this uh, light blue uh, uh, event, which is basically represented by braciated sandstone, which that might be a might be a good analog for our for our king injection complex, uh, and this is a, of course how extensive those are as might have a really a big volume, big impact on volume, considering that uh, this pressure sense on has pretty good properties, again, with about uh, one to Darcy of, uh, of uh, permeability and around 30% porosity. So at the end, uh, uh, what we learn, uh, it's a, definitely a complex discovery, but uh, here, being open-minded, do not discard the priori model was a key, a key a key thing because this was a known prospect and everyone thought that was simply the soft nice anomaly there uh, and that's all and we proved that instead it's something more <laughs> uh, definitely something more uh, from operation, uh, we need to be simple when we plan a, uh, our wells, because here at the operation side, uh, getting information and exploration status is, a, is, a, is vital. And then this was again another lesson learned that uh, 
looking all the data together with a lot of different people, different kind of competence is a key, is a key, is a key thing. And especially in this case, the 4D played a big role. Way forward, uh, we really need to work a bit more on the uh, on the Skygrack, see if we manage to see a bit more the sandstone and being a bit more predictive in this uh, fluvial system. While on the Ingetide play as well, now it's it came in uh, somehow different than what we expected. So the idea is try to be a, improve the way we work also towards potential hard uh, injection. And the key things, how we manage to map um, uh, this thin subvertical, what are the tools that can help us? We start looking at the fraction and we see some big benefit in defining some of them. A potentially new seismic, maybe OBN, and maybe even quantitative use of, of 4D. But there is one point that is really important. Here, we have a big uncertainties in the range of resources, but what we already have proven, that's already commercial. Now we are, what we are thinking here, of course we have owning the facilities. The idea is to start with uh, uh, developing uh, Ingetide first and a very uh, safe way and try to maximize value. What we are planning is essentially to start with a small scale development in the area close to the well, um, developing essentially uh, what we have basically already proven by the well, and this has proven already a kind of great economy, uh, a bit of a add-on to the uh, to what uh, the Baldrix project is uh, is already doing. So that's uh, that's uh, the key message: do not uh, give anything for granted and keep exploring, even if this is a, an area that was uh, explored since the 60s. Thank you to uh, our drilling team, Balde Group, and uh, uh, to Mime uh, Petroleum, which is a very supportive partner. And that's all from my side. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Ivan. A very, uh, <clears throat> very good uh, presentation and a uh, very exciting discovery I made here. Uh, see, we have got uh, quite a few questions, and we have time for uh, time for some. I also see we have uh, there were a couple of questions from the former uh, presentation that uh, I guess we'll try to get an answer to those uh, also later. Uh, <clears throat> but the first uh, question here, Ivan, uh, are the oil populations the same? No. <laughs> Not the same. Right? No, <laughs> it's definitely different oil from uh, from what we have in Balder, and. Uh, uh, I can say also slightly different than what has been discovered in North West. Okay, so uh, and also in the in the uh, Skagrak, uh, is that the same oil as in the in the King? It's uh, I, again, it's not exactly the same oil. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's not easy migration here as well. The migration history has been as uh, as well as been said before in the from area as a bit of everything. Uh, <clears throat> what was the reason for failure in the Statfood SLR at uh, Prince? At uh, at uh, at Prince in Statfield, what we think uh, that the truncation played really a big role because it was a uh, based on what we have seen, it was not a trap trap failure because we have a small four way closure uh, at well location and also we have seen a different pressure regime between upper and lower Statfield, meaning that the trap is really uh, working and most likely didn't get any charge there. That's uh, that came a bit of surprise as well. The lack of charge is what you believe is the thing. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, and the next question, I think, is more or less the same. Uh, brilliant work with King. Could you explain how you calculate the volumes for the discovery in the injectites? Yeah, uh, that's uh, as I said. This uh, this workflow at the end. Um, uh, what we did, uh, and, uh, again, we were looking for, for soft, so we basically had volumetric computed uh, just for soft anomalies. When we came out with this, uh, this uh, binary cube is a kind of a geobody or a, a cube, 3D cube, we give you your net sandstone, and then you spread uh, across a kind of envelope surface to get your net to gross maps, and that's, uh, that's the way we use uh, 
those net to gross map, net maps as input for uh, giving the bulk uh, gross volume. All the other elements, porosity, uh, uh, permeability, are, are, are essentially known. The, the difficult things is really to quantify the net sandstone or if you want your gross bulk volume. And uh, with a different response uh, from the, the sidetrack uh, is adding uh, an extra complexity to that because, uh, yeah, I guess we've been perhaps even a bit conservative discarding some of these hard anomalies. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, you believe there are some sounds that you don't see also in the... Definitely, definitely. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> also a question here, but... Uh... Uh, for the print Skagra discovery, are there any evidence for compartmentalization? So far, not. Um, uh, that's um, that's based on what we have observed. The well was not properly placed for Skagra because we aim at uh, at uh, at uh, Stadfjord, so it was pretty much down deep, and we cross uh, several faults, and also we. King would cross an extra fault block, and the pressure data seems that are at least showing that they uh, are talking each other. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, what methodology <clears throat> did you use to calculate the gross block volume in the like that? And how do you estimate how the carbon? Will? Yeah, that's the same. Yeah. Or less. Uh, uh, in the King and Jack Tide discovery, have you concluded from petro petrography core review what the main risk controls are? No, we are we are actually we are actually now running um, uh, CCR conventional core analysis and scale are pretty much ongoing uh, those days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you characterize sand sourcing in the injectites and relate that to the reservoir quality distribution? Yes. Uh, I think uh, we have uh, somehow an idea, although it's not really straightforward. Uh, this, uh, but uh, as general as comment, the properties are are uh, very are really incredible. Uh, the sandstone are. Uh, uh, like as I said, 33, 35 percent for the unit, uh, and, uh, and the range of Darcy permeability is more what the, the main issue here is. Really, honestly speaking, is the thickness. That's uh, that's that's the issue. <clears throat> uh, okay, and then the last uh, last one. Uh, do you believe the basement underneath is worth the testing further? Uh, that's um, that's in the in the plan. Uh, here, uh, I, of course, I didn't mention, but we have planned to appraise um, both discovery somehow, uh, and this will be part of also the phase development I mentioned earlier. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much, Ivan, for. Uh, okay. This. Thanks and, for uh, inviting. Bye bye, and I think we now are fortunately on schedule, so we'll take uh, a 15 minutes break. And we are back at uh, 10.30 sharp. <laughs>